My name is Oscar Garcia, and I'm the founder and CEO of Ula La. And Ula La, La, although the name is great and it sounds like it's something fun, it's very something, it, for us, it's something serious. You see, I'm the son of an immigrant. My mother uh, migrated to this great country and worked her butt off for years to become a citizen of the United States. But while she was migrating to the United States, and going through the process, there was a lot of problems, there was a lot of pain, there was a lot of suffering. See, we believe banking should be transparent. We believe it should be fair. We believe it should in empower people instead of disrespect people. We believe that if banking was better, you know, Wells Fargo wouldn't get fined a billion dollars for lying, stealing, and cheating the minority market. So we built Ula La to really address the $6 trillion global juggernaut that people are forgetting about, which is the Latinos. See, when you look at the numbers, you know, there's a huge Latin culture there that is unbanked, and they're not part of the formal economy. And I want to explain that. See, how many of you guys have a Visa MasterCard in your pockets right now? Raise your hand. Okay. Now watch this, put your hands out. How many of you guys don't? Raise your hand. One, one, that doesn't have a Visa MasterCard. If I would ask the same question to the population, to the Latin population in Los Angeles, the number would be 55% of the culture does not have access to their money digitally. So think about that. What if you couldn't swipe your card at a gas station? What if you couldn't use your card to check into your hotels? How difficult would it be for you to survive in today's economy without having access to your money digitally? It would be pretty difficult because we are a digital economy. So getting people into the formal economy is what we want to do. We just touched on some of the statistics. 55% of Latins in the United States are unbanked or underbanked. But the number goes higher when you leave the United States. 70% are unbanked or underbanked in Mexico, and the numbers just keep on going higher and higher. But we talked about penetration with technology, mobile penetration. Mobile penetration in this culture is over 70%. In other words, this demographic has more mobile devices than they do bank accounts. That is an opportunity. So we actually started looking at this and said, how many customers can we reach if we just target the Latin market? Over close to 600 million Latinos between here and Brazil. So that's a huge demographic. But the problem they have is the same problem my mom had. See, when I was growing up, this is not Maria, this is Martha, this is my mom. I just changed the name and I changed the face, but really it's my mom. This is what my mom and I went through. I was a young kid and I helped my mom go cash her check. And you know what they did? They took money away from her check. You know what that is? That's pan dulce. That's milk. That's eggs. For those of you guys that don't know pan dulce, it's phenomenal. It's like a drug for Latinos. We love it, right? But when you can't afford it, it sucks because your neighbor can afford it and he has pan dulce and all I want was one of those cuernitos. And, and we couldn't get it because, well, that's, I'm going off the topic. But look, bottom line, 5% of a check is a lot of money. But you know what we did after that? We stood in line so she can pay her bills. So we stood in line to cash a check, we stood in line to pay a bill, and they charged her a fee to pay her bills. And on and on and on. Do you realize that a bank account costs $29 a month times 12 is over $300? That's a lot of money to the unbanked. And that's the problem we had to solve. So we did it this way. As other apps and other companies are focused only on getting money into crypto or doing one aspect of the financial market but not the other, we decided to create a complete system. See, here's my question to you. How many of you guys have smartphones? Right? What is a smartphone? A phone, a text messaging system, a GPS system, a calculator, an MP3 player, on and on and on and on and on in one device. Why isn't all your financial needs on one app? It's the same scenario. So we, we actually looked at two major problems in the financial sector. One, how to load cash into a digital platform. 
Two, how to take that individual and make them credit worthy. So our platform solves those two problems while other people ignore those problems. Other people assume you already have a bank account and you can transfer money into their wallet or whatnot. We did not make that assumption. So the way we solve that is we actually made a system where you can load cash that goes beyond the regular rails. See, we have 150 locations where you can load money. The 7-Elevens, the Walgreens, over 60,000 ATMs. But what we built that's different is a system of peer-to-peer -peer banking. A system where an individual can help another individual load money. If you would Google right now a bank in your local area, you might get 10 or 20 different branches. But if we Google the population, in this case was New York, in New York there was 2.2 million Latinos. If we can turn 20% of them into walking, talking ATMs, we will outproduce the banking industry a hundredfold. And that's the way you bring down a juggernaut. So that was our first approach. And the way it works is very simple. Person A, let's call it Maria, wants to load $150 into her wallet. Person B, Juan, I don't know why I'm using Juan, but let's use Juan. Juan, that's the most stereotypical name, right? So is my name, Oscar Garcia. There's 30,000 Oscar Garcias here in California alone. But let's call this Juan. Juan has money in his wallet. Maria doesn't, she's a new customer. She can put in there, I wanna load $150. She will be shown all her options and maybe Juan's her nearest option. Juan can now act as the walking, talking ATM. He can help her load $150 for a $2 or $3 ATM charge that belongs to him. In essence, this is using our utility token as an escrow system where when Juan receives cash, yes, I said that, Maria will go to Juan, give him cash plus his ATM fee. Juan will hit a button. Juan will then transfer digitally money from his wallet to her wallet where she now has access to that money immediately via a virtual Visa card. What does that do? That means immediately she can start paying bills digitally so she can reduce the cost of paying those bills. Immediately she can go on Amazon. Immediately she can start saving money. Immediately she can start remitting money to her country or whatever she wants to do. Immediately because all this is tracked on the blockchain. And that is the power of decentralized system. So that was one, but what happens after Maria gets money into her system? See, that's the next round. Phase two is lowering the fees and giving credit worthiness. See, traditionally, paying your bills is not a credit worthy activity. If you remit money, it's not a credit worthy activity. If you pay your cell phone, it's not a credit worthy activity. We believe it should be because it shows responsibility. We believe that every small act matters. And if you believe what we believe, then you need to pay attention to what's going on here because if we can partner up with providers, instead of charging people a fee to pay their bills, we revenue share with our customers. If a provider gives us $5 to help him collect his money, we give 250 to our customer and we keep the other 250. But what does that do? That also opens up microcredit ledgers for our customers. See, we start tracking all those activities and then we'll know whether Juan or Maria or Esperanza or Oscar is credit worthy at a certain number. Maybe one is credit worthy at $10, another at $50, another at $100. We're all different. But with this system, we can actually track their individuality and using machine learning and smart contracts, we can actually verify that they're doing the right things so our micro lenders can actually loan them money based on their activity. But we went beyond that. We said, that's one thing that we want to do, but why don't we open it up to everybody? Why don't we create the first ever microcredit marketplace? Imagine a system where all merchants can then create a microcredit for their customer. In other words, in this example, they'll give a $15 microcredit to anyone who qualifies. Our system will scour the platform and say, this person can afford a $15 repayment. This is a smart contract that's generated from the business owner to the customer. So imagine this, the merchant can now dictate, I want payment back in two payments and in 30 days or in 60 days. And they can say, I want it back in fiat or I want it back in crypto. They can choose. But if the customer accepts that smart contract, we do the collection for them. This system will then initiate the smart contract and say, hey, he wants his payment back 
and the next time you load money, we pay back that smart, smart contract for you, which increases your credit score, which increases the likelihood of you getting a cash-based credit line. That's how you complete the circle. And we're you know, able to open this up to all providers, digital providers. Look at the market right now. A Netflix, a Hulu have a broken system. They say, we'll give you a free version of our system if you have a credit card. We just said that one person does not have one credit card. She, amongst all of us right now, couldn't get that offer of Netflix. The rest of us do. But how inconvenient is it for you to put in your credit card number there for a 30-day free trial of Netflix and Hulu? Their abandonment rate is over 55%. But their abandonment rate in the Latino market is over 80% because 80% of them don't have an ATM debit card. That's the problem. So what we said is, listen, Mr. Digital Provider, switch your mentality, offer them a credit line instead of a freemium concept. Offer them a line that they can afford, that way when they pay back that credit line on a smart contract that our system collects for you, by the way, then that will help them increase their credit score so they can get a cash-based offer. Does that give the incentive to the consumer to pay back that microcredit loan? Absolutely. And when you incentivize people to do the right thing, they will do the right thing. And if you don't know, here's the numbers. Write this down. 98% of Latinos pay back microloans. These are numbers based on Curacao, which is a big retailer here in, in Southern California, Oportun, and all sorts of lenders in the Northern California area. In other words, the Latin market pays back their loans 98% of the time when the general market pays back their loans 90 to 88% of the time. We pay back our loans more. Why? Because it's our last resort. Because this person trusted us. And because this person trusts us, we're gonna trust them, we're gonna do everything possible to work to pay back that loan. We will sell anything on the side of the freeway, but we won't ask you for money. We will sell oranges, flowers, whatever it may be, to pay back that loan because you trusted in us. And we take that mentality and we take it to a global stage. Now how do you growth hack this? There's a lot of businesses out there that are crossing their fingers and hoping to die saying that social media advertisement or whatever other marketing scheme that they have. Instead for us, what if we partner with the companies that are already dealing with the demographic? Think about it. Insurance houses, tax preparers, immigration houses, influential people in the community. These individuals and these retail shops touch 500 customers per month per location. We partner up with people in the likes of Veronica's Insurance freeway insurance, all those type of insurance companies that already provide insurance to this demographic. And you know what happens at their insurance house? When you pay your insurance in cash, they charge you $20 more than if you pay it through an ATM or debit card. That's wrong. So we partner up with them where people can sign up immediately, load money immediately in their locations, and all of a sudden, they got access to their money digitally, so they save that $20 uh, you know, charge. So insurance houses is one of the biggest things we're doing. Also, the direct sales industry. Large companies that have hundreds of thousands of people to pay out, they can now do it more affordably through our system. We actually have a system that's a B2C model where businesses can hit one button and pay out 100,000 people. On average, it costs $2.25 to give someone one check, one physical check. If you pay them digitally, we can bring that number down to 30 cents per individual. That's savings, that's power. But above and beyond that, because they're getting money directly loaded into their wallet, we can give them a micro loan. We can give them 30% against that deposit that they have. So if someone's getting paid $500, we can give them an extra $150 so they can actually afford some pan dulce, some milk. And that's the process, and that's the point of this. Thank you. See, I, I, I'm a little passionate about this. I don't know if you can tell. But I am sick and tired of the abuse. I am sick and tired of disrespect. I am sick and tired of people, banks, thinking that $2.3 trillion, that's the GDP of the Latin market in the United States, $2.3 trillion, and they still lie, steal, and cheat. The banking industry made over $30 billion in overdraft fees. That is wrong. The banking industry made over $7 trillion globally. Guys, 
Let's make a trillion. Let's give back six trillion to the marketplace. What can they do with it? That is what we're after. More than anything else is to change the mindset. And if you believe what we believe, then support us. We have a private round that just ended. We're now in our public ICO round, and we just launched our corporate headquarters of 8,000 square feet headquarters in Ontario, California, a micro Google, a place that we can be creative, a place that we can support initiatives like this. We just did this this Saturday, and we had a congressman there, we had city officials there, and we got some great supporters that came our way. And we're going to keep on doing more and more. So right now, we're, we're now in, in our 13 cents round. We're now launching our public crowd sale. We're in our first round of, of the public crowd sale. Uh, we've already reached our soft cap, so we are well funded right now to execute this business. Our product actually launches next month. We're actually in beta right now. Several people already have the software, and, and we're testing it out. Our team, forget about the CEO. He's a pissed off guy. But... Our team, uh, listen guys, I've been a serial entrepreneur since age, you know, 19. At age 18, I, I was trying out for the U.S. Olympic team in the sport of diving. I used to wear Speedos and shave my legs. I'm, I'm not sure if I should admit that. But it wasn't a sport where you have a lot of fans, but it was a sport that's committed. At the Olympic training grounds at the Rose Bowl Aquatic Center, if you guys know that area, we were there constantly every day. And you practice, you practice, you practice, you practice just to fail. Because we went out there and we competed and we got hurt. And I came in last a lot of times. But I kept on going, I kept on going. My career ended right before the Olympic trials in 1992 when I jumped off the 10 meter platform and cracked my head open on that platform. When I woke up, the doctor signed a piece of paper with my mom saying he can't dive anymore. You took away my passion, my life. So what was I meant to do? A friend of mine told me about this business entrepreneur guru guy, and he goes, do you believe in coaches? And I said, yes. He goes, you got to go meet this guy. And I was a shy kid. I was telling someone about my, <laughs> my first uh, relationship lasted 30 minutes. Um, you know, I didn't know how to kiss, right? So I, I was a real shy kid. And here they're telling me about this business guru guy, and I went to go see him, and I was captivated in business. I brought that man coffee for four years. He built the fastest growing company in the history of Inc. 500 right in front of my eyes, and I brought him coffee. I learned business by watching. I learned business by bringing this powerful individual whatever he needed when he needed it. And I didn't know I learned business. I started learning how to design and program in 1996 before you know, we were called engineers, we were called geeks and you know, losers and a bunch of other stuff. But we started playing around with computers and a partner of mine and I, we created systems for Ford Motor Company where we created an F&I you know, product that increased Ford Motor Company's profits to a million dollars a month from their F&I departments. We did this constantly, we tackled the problems. So I'm a serial entrepreneur. Four years ago, we brought the Spanish market with merchant services and the technology, and we brought that industry $60 million. I was, an, I was an employee of the company, and unfortunately, they didn't do the right thing. But we proved that the Latin market can grow dramatically. From zero to nine months later, in nine months, we brought them $60 million in revenue. Proved our point. This market can grow. Our COO has been in the banking industry for decades. Merrick Bank, Visa MasterCard, he knows risk management like no one's business. Everyone in the banking industry knows him. Because of him, we got great partners like Marketa, who services uh, um, Square, and, uh, amongst a bunch of others. Our CMO, when you meet him, he's walking around here. One of the most talented marketing guys and a good friend of mine and a partner of mine for over a decade. We've been building businesses and he's been growing as one of the leaders in the blockchain technology. He's a powerful man. Alan Alvarado, our CTO, has built eight fintech companies, has built systems that actually got bought out by the federal government. His system actually tracked terrorism and money laundering and the federal government bought out his system so he knows how to watch out for us in risk management. The rest of our team is second to none. Our business development team, is one of the best you'll ever see. You'll see them walking around. Damiano Riagosa, a networker like you wouldn't believe, a coach and a trainer. He's been in front of thousands of people. Every city we go, people know him. 
He knows half of the real estate agents, and they all know business owners. And we've been able to growth hack a lot of the things I'm talking about because of him. Andre is the, is, is the co-trade um, commissioner for Costa Rica in the West Coast. By having trade commissioners from Costa Rica as part of your execution team is amazing. Deborah, that you'll see walking around here as well, she's helped the, the music industry do amazing things, was one of the key people that brought R Ricky Martin and Jennifer Lopez to us. And she looked at this and said, my God, the music industry, the entertainment industry, they need something like this. Our attorney is here in Beverly Hills, one of the top attorneys for Universal Music and one of the top contract attorneys for a lot of stars and one of the co top contract attorneys. And his firm actually has a lot of people that are working with the SEC and a couple of other regulatory agencies so he can keep us safe. So what am I saying? I'm saying that we have something real, that we have a community that's worth $2.3 trillion. I'm saying that enough is enough. See, we're not just minorities, we're not just dreamers, we're not just Latinos, we're not just Hispanics. We are people. And we are people that can control, manage, and move $2.3 trillion. And this app brings them back respect. This app brings them back hope. This app brings them the financial inclusion that they deserve. We are ooh la la. Thank you very much. Yeah.